Uh, hi Kyla, it's Ashley. I'm just taking a little video on your phone and I'm skating. You're trying to learn how to skate and it's really cute. So yeah, but I'm trying to teach you, but I kind of suck at teaching, I'm not gonna lie. The internet has changed the way that people date and some of the dangers that are associated with meeting people that you barely know. Ashley Wadsworth was only 19 years old. She was found dead in a block of flats in Essex on Tuesday. Neighbours had reported a disturbance to the police at 4pm and the Canadian's body was discovered shortly before she was due to return back home. The Canadian had flew to Britain to meet her boyfriend who she had met initially online. She had only been in the country for 11 weeks before she was found dead in the quiet cul-de-sac. She was from a little city called Vernon in British Columbia and she had flown to England to be with 23-year-old boyfriend Jack Seppel. Photos on social media showed the couple looking happy together out in Chelmsford and also with his family at tourist hotspots including Big Ben and Buckingham Palace. Pictures shared by Jack's mother on January the 18th showed that Ashley was joining the family for a trip to the East Sussex town of Rye and Ashley was due to fly home to Vernon today but she was found dead at 4pm on Tuesday. The police arrested Jack at the scene and they are not looking for anybody else in relation to the teenager's death. This has sent shockwaves for the family and friends of Ashley and a lot of her Canadian friends took to Facebook to express how they felt about the situation. Larissa said on social media that she was a beautiful soul. She had a first for life and she loved everybody so much. Her family said this was the trip of a lifetime and nothing makes sense. Her family are heartbroken and they are struggling to understand what happened. Ashley had converted to the Church of Latter-day Saints at the age of 18 years old and she was described as a woman of great faith. A fellow churchgoer from Canada said that she, w she went to England to live with her boyfriend and she was excited to live abroad but she was due to come home to Vernon very shortly. A neighbour close to the murder scene said that the whole street was crawling with police and that they could see paramedics entering the home where the teenager was found in Essex. The teenager was brought out into the road and they tried to save her but she died at the scene. The police were talking about multiple stab wounds and it seemed she was the victim of a frenzied attack. The disturbance occurred on Tennyson Road and despite the best efforts of paramedics, she died at the scene. DCI Scott Egerton said, We are at the early stages of the investigation and the incident took place in a residential area and we are still appealing for witnesses in relation to this. And the latest update is that Jack Seppel has been charged with the murder of the Canadian teenager and he's appeared in court and been remanded in custody as well. So at this stage, as I said, it's very early. It only happened on Tuesday and already they've got him in court and he will be standing trial as soon as possible. So we have to be very careful what we say on this subject. But to be honest, there isn't much in relation to motive or understanding why he did it. So we'll have to wait for the court case to be completed in order to be able to give you the best idea of what really occurred. This definitely does highlight, as I said, online dating, long distance dating, meeting people that you've barely knew and also violence against women, which is something that I definitely try to highlight where possible and appropriate without being crass on the channel because it's a massive problem and this is just one of several cases that I've seen in the past two days. Here in Birmingham, two women have lost their life in the past week at the hands of men. And in West London, I covered the Maid of Ale story where Yasmin was the victim of her ex-lover who she hadn't even been with for several years and he stabbed her to death in the street. And there were claims that the police failed to act on several occasions. The first story I'm going to reference from Birmingham is about a mother who was killed and the police have revealed that this was a murder-suicide. She was 21 years old and her name is Lucy Powell. She's a mother of two and she was killed in her Swancoat Road home in Stetchford on Thursday evening, the 27th of January. Officers forced entry after concerns were raised by family members. A post-mortem examination concluded that she was smothered to death and died at the scene and the body of a man was found in the house also and he has been identified as Gregory Duhamel and he's 47 years old. He was found hanging and the investigations have now concluded and they said that he killed her before taking his own life. Nobody else is being sought in relation to this and Lucy's family are of course devastated and have paid tribute saying she was a brilliant loving mother to her two children. She's been taken away from us and nothing will ever fill that hole 
And rest in peace to our special girl. And the worst part about that is there's literally no answers when, when there's no victim and even the suspect has passed away. So my condolences to the family of Lucy Powell and my thoughts are with her children at this troubling time. The second murder I've covered on social media is on the website this month in Birmingham in relation to violence against women is the story of Marina Shaban. She was found dead outside a property in the Bordesley Green area and the post-mortem revealed that she died from multiple stab wounds. Inquiries are ongoing to find the person responsible and they have still not arrested anybody. The family are being supported by specially trained police officers and she was killed on Friday the 28th of January so this was the day after after Lucy was killed and her family paid tribute to the 41 year old who was found in the entrance of a property in North Home in the Borsley Green area of Birmingham just after 7pm. Sadly nothing could be done to save her life paramedics said and the post-mortem took place on the 31st of January. Marina's mother paid tribute to her loving, caring and dedicated daughter who had a fantastic personality and real zest for life. She leaves behind four children and a massive family who loved, adored and had deep respect for her. The entire family are devastated by this death. They need time to grieve and are urging anyone with information to come forward. Police are currently reviewing CCTV footage as they continue to appeal for any help in relation to that murder. And Inspector Ubhi from Birmingham West Police said this is a truly tragic case and my heart goes out to Marina's family. We know this is a big shock to the community and we really need their help in order to try to find answers for her family and her children. So in just two cases, that is a total of six children that have lost their mothers. And with the second story, we don't know the gender of the person that has done this. As is with so many cases now, sadly, it is most likely going to be male violence. So my condolences to the family of the victims and I'll definitely keep you updated on all of these stories. Please don't forget to follow me online as well at Scar City Studios and I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.